Imagine a truck set to travel an incredible distance of 8,500 kilometers. But the challenge wasn't just about making the journey, the real test, transporting a massive 3,050 kilogram block of ice across Africa's scorching desert. For days, this truck would travel under the intense sun, yet the ice was not allowed to melt and without any refrigeration. This is the story of 1959, when the world was captivated by a giant block of ice. The journey began in Moirana, a town in Norway, and was set to end in Libreville, a city in Central Africa. But why would anyone want to transport an ice block this far? It all started in 1958 in Luxembourg, home to the popular Radio Luxembourg. This radio station put forth a bizarre challenge for listeners. Transport a three-ton ice block from the Arctic to Africa and win a huge cash prize. The station promised 100,000 francs for each kilogram of ice that survived the journey, equivalent to about $16,000 per kilogram today, or a mind-blowing $48 million for the entire block. But there were strict rules. The ice block must remain whole. It could only be transported by road. No refrigeration was allowed. Radio Luxembourg offered this enormous prize, confident no one could complete this impossible challenge. After all, it was an 8,500-kilometer journey, crossing through regions where temperatures could reach 50 degrees Celsius. For months, no one dared to try. But then, a Norwegian insulation company director named Birger Natvik took on the challenge. Birger Natvik believed his company's Glassvat insulation could make the journey possible. If he succeeded, it would not only bring significant recognition to the company, but also a considerable financial reward for his team. As Natvik moved forward with assembling a team to take on the challenge, his ambitious plan quickly caught the attention of Radio Luxembourg. Alarmed by the prospect of a hefty financial payout, the radio station promptly withdrew their offer, fearing the potential loss. Despite this, Natvik remained determined to see the journey through. Although the money was no longer on the table, he realized that the publicity his company would gain could still be incredibly valuable. Natvik formed a team of specialists, including an engineer, drivers, a truck mechanic, and two cameramen. Natvik handed the job over to Sievert Claven, an expert engineer with excellent public relations skills. When the trip started getting massive media attention, many companies came forward to sponsor the journey. In total, sponsors from eight companies financed the expedition, including Shell, who provided fuel, and Scania, who provided the truck. They cut the giant ice block into smaller, manageable pieces, airlifted them by helicopter, and reassembled them into a three-ton block in a specially insulated container. The truck was also loaded with 300 kilograms of medicines to be delivered to the hospital of humanitarian Albert Schweitzer near the final destination of Libreville, the capital of Gabon. On February 22, 1959, the ambitious journey began. The European portion of the trip was relatively smooth, as the weather was mild, the roads were well-maintained, and conditions were stable. In every major city along the way, crowds gathered to cheer the team on as news of their remarkable adventure spread worldwide. As the journey progressed, so did the publicity, and the crew quickly became celebrities, when they reached Paris, the truck carrying the ice was even escorted through the busy streets by the police. The crew was invited to a dinner with the mayor of Paris, a clear sign of how famous their journey had become. However, upon reaching Marseille, the crew faced a major transition, leaving behind the familiar roads of Europe for the dangerous and unforgiving Sahara Desert. The truck carrying the ice was loaded onto a boat in Marseille's port, which transported the cargo across the Mediterranean Sea. The team had now officially arrived in Africa, but the most perilous part of the journey lay ahead. The African stretch of the journey was fraught with danger. 
Not only did the truck have to navigate the blistering heat, which could melt the ice, but the crew was also in constant danger. Parts of the Sahara Desert were embroiled in war, with guerrilla fighters hiding, posing a serious threat. These fighters could potentially steal the 300 kilograms of essential medicines the crew was carrying, or worse, capture and kill them for the sake of publicity. Due to the volatile situation, the crew was escorted by the French Foreign Legion for parts of their journey through the desert. Their instructions were clear. Drive as fast as possible and avoid stopping whenever they could. What began as a publicity stunt had quickly turned into a struggle for survival. The crew had to drive through stretches of sand with no roads. The truck, weighed down by the massive ice block, frequently became stuck in the desert's deep sands, forcing the crew to spend hours digging it free. With temperatures soaring to 50 degrees Celsius, limited resources, and the ever-present threat of guerrilla fighters, the journey had become a fight against time and the elements. The ice block was slowly melting as the truck continued its grueling trek, with small sections of it disappearing as the days passed. During this desert portion of the journey, the team encountered a group of Tareg nomads. The crew, sharing what little water they had left, opened the container holding the ice to let the camels drink from the melting ice water. A surreal moment where the world's most expensive water was given to camels. Despite the hardships, the crew persevered. They continued their journey, gradually navigating the harsh desert terrain, and after 27 days, they finally reached Libreville, their destination in Gabon, situated right on the equator. But the big question remained, how much ice had survived the journey? With bated breath, the team weighed the ice. Astonishingly, the block, which had weighed 3,050 kilograms when it left Norway, now weighed 2,714 kilograms. Only 336 kilograms had melted. Just 11% of the ice had disappeared over the course of the entire journey. While Radio Luxembourg's original financial prize was no longer available, the journey was undeniably a success. Had the reward still been in place, the remaining ice would have been worth around $43 million in today's terms, making it the world's most expensive block of ice. Instead of profiting from the ice, the crew decided to give it away. After sending a small portion back to Norway, most of the ice was distributed to the people of Gabon, many of whom had never seen ice before. Upon arriving in Libreville, the crew was invited to a dinner with French President Charles de Gaulle in Paris, but only if they would drive back to the French capital. After weeks of hardship, the exhausted team declined the offer and opted to fly back home. The ice that made it back to Norway was used in drinks served at the premiere of the documentary about the expedition. The publicity stunt was a massive success for Glassvot, the company behind the effort. Today, known as Glava AS, the company continues to manufacture glass wool for insulation. If you enjoyed this video, share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing content.